Hello everyone, welcome to this research methods tutorial about interviews and questionnaires. Interviews and questionnaires both involve direct questioning of a participant, but let's start by having a look at interviews. Interviews involve direct verbal questioning of the interviewee. So they can be carried out either face to face or over the telephone or these days via a video or web link. There are several ways that we can structure interview questions, and these include structured, semi-structured or unstructured interviews. In a structured interview, the questions are all fixed and predetermined in advance, so all of the participants are asked the same questions in the same order. Things like market research surveys are often structured interviews. One of the strengths of interviewing in this way is that it's very easy to compare the responses as all of the participants are asked exactly the same questions. It's also very easy to replicate because anybody can ask those questions in that order. However, it's very inflexible and because of this it means that any interesting answers that participants give to a question can't be followed up because the interviewer just has to read through the questions in the set order. They're also not very valid because the questions are so rigid, it might distort the truth. Another kind of interview is a semi-structured interview, which is also called a clinical interview because they're sometimes used by counsellors or therapists or doctors. In this, there are some guidelines about the kinds of questions to be asked, but the timing and the phrasing of those questions are up to the interviewer, so it's less rigid. Questions might develop from participants' answers, so if they give an interesting answer, the interviewer is free to ask an additional question to follow up on that and to get more information. This ability to follow up on interesting responses is quite a strength in a semi-structured interview because we can get a fuller account of the participants' views on a topic. However, because it's so flexible, it lowers the reliability because the questions aren't standardised. If we're asking different participants different questions or altering the wording or phrasing of the questions, we're not comparing like for like when we're analysing their results. There's also a slight potential here for interviewer bias. An interviewer might treat a participant differently from other participants or ask them more interesting questions. The last kind of interview that you need to know about is called an unstructured interview. So here there might just be some set topic area for discussion but there aren't really any fixed questions and the interviewer can clarify questions or rephrase them if necessary to help understanding. These are very very detailed and lots of insightful information can be gathered because there's no limit on the questions that can be asked. So a lot of uh, range of information. However, there's much greater potential for leading questions because they're not written in advance. So trying to formulate a question in your head during the interview can sometimes mean that the interviewer phrases them in a way which is not ideal. It often requires interviewers to be trained in interview techniques. And this can be quite time consuming and costly. And lastly for interviews, let's just have a quick look at an evaluation of interviews generally. We generally think that interviews are quite good because we can get a lot of detailed qualitative data so it gives us insight into people's beliefs and behaviours. We can ask them direct questions about why they do things or why they think things and that's very useful for psychologists. However, because of the reliance on self-report, participants can just lie. and We have no way of knowing if the responses they're giving are the truth or if they're lying. There's also an issue of social desirability, which may distort the participants' answers. Particularly if we're asking questions about something that's socially sensitive, participants might not want to give their, their real view on the topic because it might make them look bad. So they'll change their answer to make them look better in the eyes of the interviewer. Okay, now let's have a look at the use of questionnaires and surveys in psychology. So the main uses are for things like opinion surveys and for psychometric tests. They tend to be written pen and paper tests where you'll give somebody a sheet of printed questions and then take in their responses at the end. This can be done face to face or questionnaires can be posted out and sent back to the researcher. 
typically they tend to require yes or no answers or participants could be asked to tick or circle various options. And there are different ways that we can structure our questions in a survey. Closed questions are questions where participants can only give limited answers. There's generally only one set answer that they can give, such as yes or no, or, um, circling or ticking an option, something like what is your name or how old are you, are you male or female. All of these are closed questions because they can only give one of a very limited set of answers. For example, we could have a statement about a tutorial. Today's tutorial was helpful. And then a forced choice. So participants could be asked to just circle yes or no, depending on whether they agree with that statement or not. They could also be asked to circle a response on a Likert scale. So from a range of responses, strongly disagree through to strongly agree. Here they're only being asked to circle one response. So it's still a closed question, although they've got a slightly wider range of responses. Another way of asking a closed question is to pose a question such as what was your experience of today's tutorial and then to use something like a semantic differential scale. So we've got differences between helpful and unhelpful and participants can circle whichever one along that scale that they agree with, unfocused or focused. So again it's still closed but it gives us a slightly wider range of responses. Or we can give them some option responses and ask them to circle one. So did they find it useful, focused, rushed, for example? If they don't agree with any of those, we can leave an option for other and then they can specify what their answer is. With open questions, participants can give their own responses freely. They can sometimes be used to follow up responses to a closed question. So if in a previous closed question the participant had said they found the tutorial unhelpful, we could follow that up with a question, why do you think the tutorial was unhelpful? We could also ask them something like, how do you think the tutorial could be improved? They can give any answer at all to this question. They're not limited by choices or having to tick or circle one response. They can say absolutely anything they want in response to this question. Why and how are good words to use in open questions because they encourage participants to elaborate on a response. Try to avoid starting a question with something like do you think or do you agree because this could just lead to a simple yes or no response. Question words like where, when and what are not quite as effective for open questions because participants may not elaborate on their responses. So let's have a look at an evaluation of both interviews and questionnaires. So here I'm going to use a Venn diagram. If you've not seen these before, anything that applies just to interviews is on this side. Anything that applies just to questionnaires on this side. And this part in the middle here can apply to both interviews and questionnaires. So let's start by looking at interviews. One of the strengths of interviews is that we can gain a lot of insight from the qualitative data. They tend to give very wordy, very descriptive results for us to analyse. And because we're asking questions face to face, we can check that the participants understand the questions, which we don't have if they're just reading a question. If they're not sure what the question's asking for, they might not answer it in the right way. However, because we get so much descriptive data, it's very time consuming to, to analyse the data and it really takes a long time to carry out an interview. A good interview can take about an hour, it takes a long time then to transcribe and type up the interview responses and to code it. They're not really very easy to carry out. There's also a potential for interviewer bias. So here the interviewer might treat different participants differently which could affect our results. So now looking at questionnaires, questionnaires can give us a combination of qualitative and quantitative data depending on whether we use mostly open or closed questions and that can be quite a good thing. They're also very easy to use with large samples so it doesn't take a long time to give somebody a questionnaire and to analyse the results compared to an interview which can take hours and hours. So this is quite good. However, 
participants may not understand the questions, so their answers will not be accurate if they don't really know what the question is asking of them. And there's no opportunity for them to check with anybody, particularly if it's been sent through the post. Another issue, and especially relevant to postal surveys, is a low response rate. Sometimes you might hand out a questionnaire to somebody and they don't send it back. There might be something different about the people who do send their responses back compared to those who don't, so that might lead to bias in the results. Social desirability bias is going in the middle of our Venn diagram because it can apply both to interviews and questionnaires. It's probably more likely with an interview because it's asked directly face to face. Somebody might not want to come across as being a bad person in front of an interviewer, but it can also happen in response to questionnaires. If people don't feel comfortable giving their real view, they can change what they say to make them sound better. Another issue could be leading questions, and this applies both to interviews and questionnaires, phrasing the question in a way which leads the respondent to answer in a certain way. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. So thanks very much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.